Good morning. In this presentation, I will talk about the analysis of mesonuclear vaults through simplified micromodels. As we know, masonry vaults represent one of the most widespread structural elements in historical constructions. They can be built with different shapes and forms, but also with different construction techniques, for example, with big blocks or small bricks. For the aim of this presentation, distinction will be made between macrogeometry and microgeometry. With macrogeometry, we denote the overall dimensions of the vault and its geometrical configuration. The same macrogeometry can be built with different materials, stones or bricks, and with different patterns of the masonry apparatus. These features denote what we call microgeometry and are mainly related to the historical building practice relative to a specific age and geographical area. Great attention to bricklaying and the creation of the masonry apparatus can be found in the European technical literature published between the 15th and the 19th century, which has deeply dealt with the constructive phases of vaults. This careful description of brick laying best practices probably highlights the desire to increase the strength of brick vaults also through the building techniques. In the technical literature, great attention is also given to the description of wooden centerings, which had to be carefully designed in order to be able to withstand the weight of the vault until completion and act as a geometrical guide. In some cases, the construction of wood formwork was difficult, if not impossible. The retrieval of wood was an additional issue for large vaults and domes, especially in some geographical areas where wood was scarce. To overcome these problems, self-supporting structures were invented, and the most fam famous example is certainly the Brunelleschi Dome of Santa Maria del Fiore in Florence, which you can see on the left side of the screen. The possibility of constructing without formwork is strictly correlated to the internal microgeometry of the masonry apparatus, since only specific building techniques allowed for the construction without supports. One, one of the oldest methods, though, is the so-called pitched brick vaulting, which you can see on the right side of the screen. It is an, an adaptation developed in the first century of the Roman Empire of a much older Near Eastern and Egyptian technique that was used in mud brick architecture from at least the third millennium BC, known as Nubian vaulting. If in the Near East the scarcity of wood may justify the use of pitched vaults, in the European tradition we can see that vertical bricks are most often used only at the crown of the vaults. The reason for using vertical bricks at the crown of the vault when the haunches are built of radial bricks is not always clear. Choisy speculates that haunches are built of radial bricks without centering until the point where this was no longer possible and then the vault was completed with vertical bricks. The choice of vertical bricks, even if formwork was used, can be explained considering that once every new course was closed, it began to act as an arch, therefore relieving the formwork below from part of, a, of the vault weight. This could have resulted in a smaller and cheaper wood structure. One further consideration in choosing vertical bricks for the crown could relate to the builder's perception of some structural advantage. As can be seen from the figure on the bottom left, the classic crack pattern consists in two hinges at the intrados, therefore not visible from underneath, and one at the extrados at the crown. So builders observing this behavior would have naturally perceived the crown as a weak point. Today we finally have the possibility to scientifically investigate these issues related to brick pattern. To do so, discrete models are certainly more suitable than continuous models to correctly describe the role of masonry apparatus. Different kinds of discrete models are available in the literature, such as micro uh, finite element models, distinct element models, and rigid block models, and all of them have been applied to masonry vaults. 
the use of discrete models usually implies the need to adopt um, to adopt ad hoc written numerical codes or ad hoc implemented constitutive laws to correctly describe masonry behavior. Therefore, their use becomes difficult, if not impossible, in the engineering practice. The proposed method of analysis tries to overcome these uh, limits by implementing a simplified micromodeling micro approach within the general purpose FEM software Abacus and using built-in constitutive models to describe masonry constitutive laws. According to the simplified micromodeling approach, the structure is schematized as a set of blocks expanded to account for the mortar thickness if present, connected by equivalent interfaces representing the non-linear behavior of mortar joints and real blocks to mortar interfaces. The blocks are modeled as deformable, elements with linear elastic behavior whose mechanical parameters are, are the elastic modulus, the Poisson coefficient, the material density. In the interfaces, normal and tangential components are assumed as uncoupled, and the normal uh, contact in compression is assumed as almost rigid through the definition of a normal stiffness Kn. The tangential behavior is assumed to be purely frictional, Therefore, the mechanical parameters describing the interfaces are Kn and the friction coefficient. The proposed approach has been validated through two experimental benchmarks, which are in-scale models of an arch and a cross vault. Here you can see the arch model built with wood blocks and mortar joints. The table summarizes the mechanical properties of the blocks and interfaces. In particular, Kn has been calibrated through a convergence analysis. The arch has been subjected to opening of one of the abutment until collapse. The picture below compares the experimental and numerical collapse shapes. The numerical imposed displacement at, displacement at collapse equals 12.82 millimeters, which is 6.7% lower than the one registered experimentally. The numerical 5-hinge collapse mechanism consists in the simultaneous opening of two hinges at the abutments, whereas in the experimental test, only four hinges open at the collapse, probably due to geometrical imperfections of the physical model. The second case study is the 1 to 5 scale model of a cross vault built at the University of Genoa. The cross vault has a square base and the net span is about 0.62 meters and the vault is made of typical brick blocks 6 by 12 by 24 centimeters on a scale 1 to 5 which are made of a plastic and are assembled with dry joints. Inside each block, a steel plate was inserted in order to increase the vault's weight. The geometrical model of the cross vault has been generated with rhinoceros. The block size and dimensions are the same as in the plastic model, except for the blocks along the diagonal arches, which, are, which were modified in order to simplify the subsequent definition of interfaces. The geometrical model has been imported in Abacus for the generation of the mechanical model, and the finite elements used for the bricks are linear hexahedra of 6 mm in size, while the blocks are along the diagonal arches and in the abutments are modeled using second order tetahedra of the same approximate size. Um, the first table summarizes the mechanical parameters adopted for the simulation. The elastic modulus E was obtained by compression tests on meson repillers made of six blocks. This means that it is an overall elastic modulus taking into account the deformability of both plastic blocks and interfaces. The figure shows the corresponding load displacement curves, which are nonlinear. Therefore, four different values of E have been estimated and adopted in the analysis. Concerning the contact stiffness, its value, as already stated, has been calibrated through a convergence analysis in order to simulate an almost rigid contact. Of the several experimental tests that have been performed, two have been chosen to be simulated numerically. 
an opening test consisting of the spread of two abutments when two are kept fixed, and a shear test consisting of the sliding of two abutments when the other two are kept fixed. Um, here are the results of the opening tests. The load displacement curves show a very good agreement between the experimental results and the numerical ones for different values of E. The numerical and experimental collapse shapes show a surprising similarity. The overestimation of the ultimate displacement is probably due to the experimental imperfections that weren't accounted for in the numerical model. Regarding the shear test, the numerical load displacement curves are in very good agreement with the experimental ones. The value of E that corresponds to the best fit for the experimental data is 80 MPa. Also, the numerical collapse shape perfectly reproduces the observed collapse mechanism. Now that we have a validated procedure, it can be applied to full-scale brick masonry vaults to investigate the effects of brick pattern on the static behavior of cross vaults. Um, cross vaults have been analyzed with four different patterns, radial, vertical, pitched, and diagonal pattern. Here we can see the model set up. All nodes at the abutments are pinned, resulting in a fixed support. Moreover, in order to confine the web hedges, um, vertical walls adjacent to the head arches are modeled as solid plates of 30 millimeters in thickness, whose nodes are all pinned. The vaults are subjected to gravitational load only. On the top right side of the screen, we can appreciate the, the, the dimension of the mesh. The finite element uh, used for the bricks are linear etc. of 3 cm in size. The figure on the bottom left represents the reaction forces that are monitored in the analysis. In the scheme, the RY abutments and RZ abutment represent the sum of the horizontal and vertical reaction forces along one spring, while uh, RY head and RZ head represent the horizontal and vertical reaction forces in one vertical wall. On the bottom right, we can see um, the mechanical parameters used in the analysis. The first analysis compares the behavior of vertical and pitched vault. It can be observed that the vertical brick laying does not allow for equilibrium in cross vaults since the courses that are not directly in contact with the supports slide vertically. This is the reason why this kind of pattern is not reproduced in technical treatise nor can be found in the inbuilt examples of cross vaults. Conversely, pitched vaults are stable under self-weight only if head walls are present. Otherwise, a sliding mechanism occurs. A similar thing happens with the diagonal pattern. The outer part of the web edges cannot find equilibrium without the presence of confinement walls, but the rest of the structures appear to be stable. In the case of radial pattern, even though the vault is able to find equilibrium without head walls, the confinement due to the presence of head walls contributes in stiffening the system, avoiding the out-of-plane deformation of head arches. This is also evident when looking at the contour plots of vertical displacement, which are almost 65% smaller at the crown when walls are present in the case of radial pattern. This figure plots the reaction forces at the abutments and at the head walls for, for the four stable configurations. The diagonal pattern is the one which corresponds to the lowest vertical force since part of the vault self-weight is taken by the head walls. The same does not occur in the radial pattern even when the head walls are present since all the vaults self-weight is taken by the abutments. On the other hand, Pitch vaults are responsible for the highest horizontal thrust at the head walls, whereas the diagonal patterns produces the lowest thrust at the abutments. 
In conclusion, we can state that the proposed modeling approach has proven to be quite robust for both dry jointed structures and masonry with mortar joints. The experimental results have been reproduced with a high degree of accuracy both in the cases of planar and space structures with both dry joints and mortar joints with low cohesion. The approach has been successfully applied to study the effect of microgeometry on the behavior of cross faults under self-weight. The results of the analysis have highlighted a significant influence of the mesmer apparatus on both the deformed shapes and reaction forces at the abutments and at the head walls, allowing to confirm some of the intuitions found in historical technical literature. Thank you.